Hi, I'm Cornelia Engel, and this is Understanding the Amherst Community for Fort Hayes State University, EDL 856, Module 5. The first thing you need to know before you can understand Amherst is where we're located. We are located in Northern Ohio. Um, we are located in Lorain County, which is the fourth largest county as far as square miles goes. We are 2.5 miles south of Lake Erie, about 40 minutes to Cleveland, and about two hours to Columbus. Um, we're also about two hours to Toledo, um, and we also have Cedar Point, which is our amusement park, that is about 35 to 40 minutes away as well. History, Customs, and Traditions. Amherst Township area was first settled by Jacob Shoup in 1811. Josiah Harris established what is now the village in 1818. Jonas Stratton gave our area the name of Amherst. Amherst was known for its sandstone and quarries. And if you ever come to our town, you can see a lot of um, sandstone as far as buildings go, or we actually have um, big sandstone um, wheels here too. The community still has ma many historical homes and buildings. The high school, middle school, and elementary school are all named after community members. So we have an elementary school that is named Harris Elementary, and we have a just recently closed elementary school that was called Shoop Elementary. Two of the things that we like to do in our town is we have Pride Day. We have community members um, come and help clean up the town. A lot of sports participate in this. Um, like the football team will send a group of students. Um, some of the churches will send, um, send people to help clean up the community. We also have Dancing on Main Street, which is a town-wide party. Um, our whole town um, participates. We have, again, um, community members set up booths. We have food. Um, there, is, there are vendors, there's bands, and we um, basically close down the town for this party. Our population. In 2010, our population was 12,021 people. Our ethnicity is 95% white, 5% combination of Hispanic, Latino, African American, Native American, Asian, or other. As far as our households go, 58% of our households are married couples, 11 are female-run households with no males, 4% are male-run households with no female leader, and 27% are non-families. As far as gender goes, we are 48% male and 52% female. As far as ages, we have 22% of our population is under 18, 7% of our population is between 18 and 24. 21% of our population is between 25 and 44, 32% of our population is between 45 and 64, and 18% of our population is 65 and older. Our, in 2013, our estimated median income was $64,969. Communication. Communication is huge. Um, as far as Amherst schools go, we have Twitter, we have a Facebook, we have a school website. Um, our superintendent does district all, um, all calls that go out to community members, staff, and, stu and families. We have community email. Um, our students also are provided with email accounts through our district. We have Steel News Live, which is our student-run news, and we have Power School, which is the way for our, te for our teachers to um, upload grades and for parents to be able to keep track of their students' grades. Um, we have Main Street Amherst, and they're a big um, part of our community, and they have a Facebook, a Twitter, and their own webpage. Um, our Amherst community actually has its own webpage. The police have web, um, a webpage, they use text messaging, and they have a Facebook page. And then we also have community pages that are Facebook-based. We have um, a couple of local papers. We have the Amherst News Times, the Morning Journal, and the Chronicle. The Morning Journal and Chronicle are local community um, but not Amherst-based, whereas the Amherst News Times is an actual Amherst paper. And then we actually also have our own cable TV, which is, as you can see, is ACC TV. The next thing I'm going to talk about is community groups. We have lots of groups in our community, and these are some of the ones that I'd like to share with you. The first one that I want to bring up is our Historical Society. Our Historical Society is great. We, they actually run um, our Amherst Sandstone Village, complete with the Quigley Museum, which ha is one of the um, earliest examples of sandstone architecture in the Amherst area. They have a blacksmith shop, an old chapel, 
um, Amherst Auto Garage, um, which has two vintage automobiles, um, a 1920 Model T Ford and a 1920 Model Chevy truck. There's a pig barn, an art gallery, um, an archaeological research center, um, and some other houses and barns that are located there. Um, the community gets to go there um, when the kids are in third grade. They take a field trip there. It's open for the community. The community can use the grounds for um, like showers or weddings. Um, and kids will go there to take prom pictures and things like that. So it's really well done and well run by the Historical Society. We also have um, some local groups. Um, Amherst Eagles um, is an organization and they donate um, some money to our sport our sporting events and our um, like Special Olympics into our schools. We have an American Legion in Amherst VFW. We have 17 churches that really support our community. And then we have Main Street Amherst, which I've um, talked about before. And they um, do a lot within our community. They help with um, what's called Walking on Wednesday, where um, the stores op stay open late and you can walk around and just see what's going on. There's usually a band that plays but it's just a nice way to get out and see the community. We also have the Amherst Athletic Association. Um, they do uh, adult softball is one of the things that they do, and I actually play for them. We have Amherst Youth Football. Um, around here, football is a huge deal. Um, we have flag football. We have youth tackle football. Um, we have CYO football. So football around here is a big deal. We also have the Amherst Swim Team. We have Amherst Youth Soccer. And then we have the workshop players, which is a theater group. The next part is leadership. Our mayor is Mark Costella. His daughter graduated recently from um, Steele High School. We have the Board of Education for Amherst Schools. Our board is very um, well known. We have a lot of um, board members that do other things within our community. They're very supportive of our community. Um, one of the members of our board works with Main Street on Amherst. Another one is very well known in their church. Um, they just, they really do a lot for our community. We have the superintendent of Amherst Schools, which is Steve Sayers. He also is very visible within our community. And then we have the police department and Main Street Amherst. Again, um, Main Street Amherst keeps popping up because they do so much for our community. Community leader characteristics. Um, our community is, leaders are very passionate. They really love our community. Um, they are well known. Like I said, we live in a small community and everyone knows everyone. They're very visible. Our leaders are out in public interacting with community members. Um, one, of, Our mayor is actually the owner of our local movie theater. We have a, a one theater movie theater um, and they do a lot. He gives a lot back to the schools a lot. He um, invites the schools to come up and have movie days at the theater. So we, we walk up a couple of times during the school year and go up there. Um, especially like right before Christmas break or right before the end of the school year. Um, our community leaders are accessible to the public. You can call, visit, email, text, Twitter, etc. Um, our superintendent actually even gives out his cell phone number to anybody who wants to be able to communicate with him. So our community leaders really go above and beyond and make sure that um, the community members feel um, that they're heard. And, um, you know, even if we don't always agree on everything, they at least um, give everybody the chance to say what they think and feel. Economic conditions. We have a small downtown with restaurants and small businesses. Um, like I've said before, we have a very um, tight-knit community that really supports our local businesses. We also have multiple car dealerships, um, one of them being Slimans, um, and they contribute a lot to our schools. They have um, helped us to create a softball field. They also um, invite the team, the athletic teams to bring their athletes and um, stick as many kids as they can into a car. It's um, stuff a Jeep. And um, the team that stuffs the most students into a Jeep then wins money for their sport. Um, as far as unemployment goes, we have a um, unemployment rate of 6.7% and job growth is up 0.1%. Um, our real estate taxes are 1.91%, which are significantly less than surrounding communities. Um, our district really works hard to do more with less. Our median home price is $132,700. Our political structure, 
Um, politics definitely and education definitely go hand in hand, um, especially with funding. Um, so our funding for our school is 42.7% local funding, 45.3% state funding, 3.6% federal funding, and 8.4% with other funding. As you can see for um, state funding, our state funding is less than other um, schools in our state. Um, and the same with the federal funding. Um, we do have um, more with um, other, as I say, um, non-tax funding. Um, but then again, our, um, and with our local funding, our local community really takes, um, you know, really does a good job at supporting our schools and funding our schools. Social tensions. Um, one of the biggest social tensions that we have um, is keeping our historical pride while allowing new businesses. Um, we, as you could see earlier, our historical society really takes pride in our community, as do the rest of our community members. And when new businesses that um, are not um, small town businesses try to move in, that is an issue. Um, one of the things that we're having go on right now is commercial businesses moving in. Um, so we have dollar generals um, throughout our community and throughout surrounding communities. And we um, just had our um, city was asked to allow um, a permit for another Dollar General to move in. And our community was really upset about it. Um, there's no reason, unfortunately, to keep them out or fortunately, depending on how you view it. Um, but our community was not um, as supportive as they could be um, just because they like the small town feel um, and commercial businesses don't really keep that. Um, and then community opinions regarding transgender restrooms is an issue right now. I know that that is a national issue um, and not just a local issue, but that is something that is being brought up right now. Power structures. Our school district's power structure is our superintendent. Then we have an executive director of educational services. We have a director of special education. Our high school has a principal, an associate principal, and an assistant principal. Our junior high has a principal and an assistant principal, and our middle school and both elementary schools have um, one principal each. Measuring public opinion. Our community is very supportive of our school district. We have passed the last two levies and a renewal. We need to increase communication between the schools and the community to continue the support we have and build it up even more. Extra sources of information. We have the City of Amherst website, Amherst Exempted Village School District website and Main Street Amherst's website. And these are the resources I've used. I hope you enjoyed learning about my community. Thank you.